Hey all, what's up? It's Huckleberry here. Hey, uh, gonna throw you a little little information here, a little video here about uh, the bumper mods that I've done on the front of the JT. I've had quite a few questions, especially about the winch plate that I've used um, and the fitment because it's a it's actually a JK bumper. So, I uh, hope you enjoy the video. So you can tell there are clips there inside the little what I would call a spacer filler. I don't know what the technical term of that plastic piece is, but it's in between the bumper and the grill. At first look, it looks like there's just two clips like there was on the JK, but you look a little closer and there's a few on the back side too. So six more, so a total of eight, I think. So all you gotta do is pry up that little center round piece and you'll see it kind of pops up like this. And then you just wiggle it out of there. Anyway, once you get those eight clips removed, that thing's totally free and loose. So the next step actually confirms something that uh, was discussed in the Facebook group earlier, whether this is steel or plastic. That's steel. Now this is a Rubicon model. I'm guessing maybe the uh, sports and probably the Overland also um, have plastic there. But you gotta remove that steel plate, that skid plate there, um, to be able to get from underneath to all the bolts you're gonna want to reach on the back side of the bumper. It's pretty tight in there. So I think that steel plate and coming in from the bottom is gonna be a lot easier than trying to get it from the top. All right, so the uh, front bumper is off. Pretty much as easy as I thought it would be. Four bolts on each frame horn after you get that uh, little filler piece removed like we talked about earlier. Um, side note here, there's one harness on the passenger side for both fog lights. So don't spend any time looking for a disconnect over here because there's not one. I only spent maybe 30 seconds <laughs> hunting for that crap. All right, so I wanted to test fit the guts from the other bumper, um, which you see here. The bumper I'm uh, modifying or putting on here is a, uh, it's off of my 16 Rubicon Hard Rock bumper. Um, so I've torn that bumper apart. I'm gonna make a couple of little tweaks to it um, before I put it on here with the winch. But um, these inner guts here should pretty much line up with those frame horns um, and for the most part there's the bolts on the back side of that that need to line up there they do line up but what I found is the inner holes are big enough the outer holes are not so I'm gonna have to uh, drill those out a little bit to get these to fit um, so I'm sure it's probably the same on the other side, which I'm about to test it. All right, so I got the right, or the, I'm sorry, the driver's side went on. Um, just had to drill out those outer holes a little bit. I used, I believe, a half inch drill bit here. Um, side note, the uh, upper outer hole seemed to be the one that was the tightest fit that needed the most drilling out. So once that's done, then those are in there. All right, so the test fit on the inner guts of the bumper went as planned. They fit perfectly. Uh, next step is gonna be replacing those red tow hooks with D-ring mounts, D-ring shackles, um, which will later be used for hooking up the tow bar and pulling behind the motorhome. We'll have to see if the outer shell of the bumper needs any modification for those to fit. I'm just waiting on those to come in and then uh, we'll finish this thing up. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, got some parts in so I can uh, make a little more progress on this thing. These are the D-ring shackles from Evo. Um, I can post a part number or whatever later in the comments, but you can see they're pretty solid. They're thick, uh, I think three quarter inch plates come with uh, all the hardware um, also seems pretty solid I'm gonna double check everything make sure we're talking about like 
grade eight automotive or better on these, but I'm sure we probably are. Um, so the next step then is cutting off the crush cans from this piece. So I'm doing my best, just using a little Dremel here to try to cut that basically around the can, cut it off, and then I'll grind it down to kind of make it flush. And then the, those holes, which I already verified line, line up perfectly with the, uh, with the frame horns, because I already have them on there now for a couple of days. Um, those uh, D-ring shackles will just go right over here, right over basically where this is now, flush on the front. And then the, uh, the outer bumper or shell, if you will, will fit right back in over them. So here we go. So I've got the crush can cut off. Um, as you can see, it is literally just a can. It's just a big, heavy piece of steel. So just cutting around that outer edge, um, you know, you can't get it exact, so I'm gonna have to grind that down, smooth it out, but I wanted to leave this, this center part here intact, which is why I didn't just cut around the can, but I would actually cut it off. So I'll grind that down and paint it up, get all that bare metal covered up, and then uh, we'll be good to put this thing back on. Okay, so I got the grinding done, the painting on those, uh, those inner, kind of shells of the uh, bumper. Got the D-ring supports on there. Got it bolted up. Um, we'll do the side view. This side's all tightened down. Getting ready to tighten down that side. And then the outer uh, outer shell, if you will, of the bumper is gonna go on. All right, so uh, took a little bit of finagling, a little bit of a tight fit after uh, doing it kind of backwards from what most people would do. I know that most people don't take the entire bumper apart, so getting those inner and outer shells to line back up correctly and get all the all the big bolts back in around the upper and bottom on both ends, getting everything to align. Took a little bit of work. Had to use a jack to kind of lift on one side, get it all aligned, but we've got the, the basic piece back in place now. As you can see, no winch yet. Waiting on my winch plate to come in. Once that comes in, the winch will go down in there. And uh, I'll actually cut the cap a little bit over the top here uh, to fit when the winch is not in use. But I've got my D-ring mounts in the bumper now. Um, don't have the fog lights back in yet. We'll work on that next. So I've been trying to work up uh, how I'm going to do these fog lights. And what I really want to do is use the, uh, the factory LEDs that came on the Gladiator because, you know, they match the rest of the set. They look good. I do have a set of uh, JW speaker fogs that I thought about plugging in there that look really good, but they're blacked out, so they wouldn't quite match. So I decided to try to use these. Let me tell you, this plastic bumper that came on this thing is ridiculous the number of screws and clips that I had to take out just to take this stupid bumper apart to get that wiring harness out but I wanted the factory wiring in with the factory fogs just to avoid any possibilities of uh, problems with wire splicing and crap like that but anyway got it out um, harness is out lights that was the easy part getting the lights out so gonna try fitting those into that bumper and uh, here we go. All right, so what I'm finding here, fairly obvious, the way these fog lights bolted up into this factory hard rock bumper, there were two, two holes, two little screws holding on the inner side of the factory fog lights. The new fogs have four tabs for holding them into that, that bigger bumper. So what I'm gonna do is cut off these outer tabs on each side because that hard rock bumper comes along pretty pretty tight in here and you'll see it when it's all assembled while we're ha having to cut these tabs out, but uh, that's what's next. All right, so I got the driver's side one screwed on. You can see where I cut the tabs off. Don't really think I need to smooth it out necessarily because it's gonna be hidden, but uh, we'll see about fitment once I get it on there. But there's the light. There's 
the wiring harness. It's all gonna get tidied up once the bumper's back on. Getting ready to do the uh, passenger side. All right, so we got the fog lights in. Done with that part. Now I am just waiting on the dang winch plate to come in. Get a little impatient with that. But as soon as the winch plate gets in, we can finish this thing up. It'll obviously drop in there, then I can start kind of, you know, working, hiding all the wires and making everything, tighten it all up, make it all look good. But uh, LEDs are a perfect fit. So the uh, FedEx guy just came and I finally got this little beauty shipped in. Um, the winch plate. This is actually made for a specific type of bumper, but from what I could see online, it looked like this was going to really work well with my setup. So I went ahead and ordered it. The price was really, really good too, compared to a lot that I've seen. As you can see, it's it's thick steel. There's nothing there's nothing cheap here. It's pretty well done. Um, so looking forward to now. I get to pull all that off that I've done so far and uh, bolt this bad boy up. All right, so the uh, winch plate is all bolted up. And I gotta say, this thing fit really well. It's a great um, little setup. This plate is actually, it's made by LOD for one of their bumpers. Um, it's actually designed for a JK, but it worked perfectly uh, with the JL. I think you saw the pictures before. It's got the uh, it's got plate a full plate on the front that wraps around here and comes up behind all four of your frame horn, frame horn bolts on both sides. Um, so you can see we've got the shackle that I added, the B-ring shackle. We got the inners to the bumper, and we've got the steel plate bolts and everything for the actual winch plate right here. Um, all the this, this frame supports that were in here stayed. Um, replaced the two bolts here with some steel backers, spacers there to make that line up right. Um, and this thing is rock solid, so now it's time to get the winch on there and go back in with the bumper and um, see how it all lines up from there. There we have it. The winch is bolted up. Nice and snug in there. There's still plenty of room though to work around it. So next step is going to be wiring everything up. I plan on wiring uh, with a cutoff in those main aux switches in the cabin. Um, so I'll do another video separately on that. But uh, I'm gonna bolt the bumper back on, get this winch good and hidden, and I'll show you the final result. Winch is in, bumper is back on. As you can see, I got plenty of space here to work around. What I'm trying to figure out next is the plate that uh, fills that spot. It usually sits under, inside the bumper there. The only thing keeping it from doing that is the handle. So I'm trying to decide if I want to cut out the plate to accommodate the handle so it still slides in underneath the bolt in, or if I want to switch that around and have it just bolt on top and maybe even weld on some extra here to really cover this whole area when it's not in use and then it'll be easy on easy off for when I want to use it so still figuring that part out I guess you'll see soon with what I decided I'm gonna go ahead and cap off this video only because we're trying to figure out a few things design wise on what we're gonna fab up for the uh, the covers here and the cover here and uh, that's gonna take me a little time and work to get that done so I don't want to leave this video hanging I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out for now um, I'm gonna do another video here pretty soon. I, hopefully this next week, I'm gonna get to wire up the winch and the lights. I went ahead and mounted my KC uh, G34 lights, um, but they're not wired up yet. So that'll be another video. And then I'll come back with a follow-up video once I get the fab stuff done on the rest of this bumper. But this is what we got so far. Really happy with how it's turning out here. Um, I've still got the plastic caps that can pop on here and cover up. Um, which I may use until we do the other deals. But uh, for now, this is what we're working with. Hope this video helped you guys. Um, please subscribe. 
if you want to, um, especially if you've got a JT and you like talking through this stuff, because I think we can all share some great ideas here. Um, again, this one is a JK bumper off of a uh, hard rock. Same bumper they put on the 10th anniversary and the 75th anniversary uh, models, as well as I think the Model X. Um, there might have even been a couple of others they used it on, but they're pretty re readily available bumpers and, and they're very adaptable, um, which is the great thing, I think, with them. You can do a lot with them and make them what you want. So anyway, guys, I'm signing off now for, for now on, on this particular project and uh, see you on the next video.